round two. It's your yeah, host, yeah. Tony, your co-host, Baxter. Mate, how are you doing this week? Yeah, look, I'm doing okay. That's all I can say. You're doing okay. And obviously that smile on his face is his, his lovely hat on his head is on top, just like his team is on top after round one. We'll get into that a little bit later because this man did not have that team in the top eight, but we will we'll move on to a team that is a rival of them. And it is the Brisbane Broncos and the South Sydney Rabbitohs. The two losers from Las Vegas go head to head this weekend. I guess, Baxter, this is my question to you. Obviously, the NRL has done them a favour before we jump into the lineups. They've done them a favour by having them play against another team that was in Vegas, similar breaks, similar preparation. How do you think Vegas is going to affect these two teams and obviously the Roosters and Manly that we'll talk about later in the week? Yeah, you talk about fairness. Um, these guys play Thursday <clears throat> and then your boys play Sunday. So if you really want to talk about fairness, I think both te- uh, both uh, all four teams should be playing on the the same um, day in round two. But nonetheless, I think that's uh, Nick Pilatus having the NRL in his back pocket. But a story See, for another day. You'd think, story- you'd think it was Nick Pilatus, but you got to remember, Brisbane don't like playing unless it's a Thursday or Friday night in Suncorp. So maybe it's more of a Brisbane thing, not wanting to play on the weekend. But we will move straight into the lineups. It is there on the screen. I will go first. You've got the Brisbane Broncos. Like we said, it's coming at you from Thursday at Suncorp Stadium, 8 p.m. Sydney time. You've got Reese Walsh, Jesse Arthurs, Katoni Stiggs, Cobbo, Dean Mariner, Ezra Mann, Adam Reynolds, Corey Jensen, Billy Walters, Payne Haas, Brendan Piakura is back from his HIA. He has passed, so by all accounts, he will play this weekend. Jordan Rickey, Patrick Carrigan with an interchange of Tyson Smoothie, Fletcher Baker, Cobe Heverington, and Marty Tapao. With the man waiting in the reserves as the 19th man is Xavier Wilson with Tristan Saylor as the 20th man. Baxter, I'll throw it to you. Obviously, a lot of talk about this game is obviously they both lost in Vegas, but a lot of talk is around the number six in this squad, Ezra Mann. Without going too much into detail, what's happened has happened. They're dealing with that. They've dealt with it behind closed doors. Suspensions have been handed out. How does that affect his game going into this week? Do you think he's ready to fire? Do you think he's going to struggle? Is there going to be, I guess, attacks on the field, or do you reckon the league rallies around him and moves forward? Uh, I think it's a little bit from column A, B, and C. Uh, I think if they had played last weekend, um, a week after the comments were made, I think he'd be more fired up. But given that there it's uh, two weeks now since it's happened, um, uh, yeah, as you said, punishment has been handed down of eight weeks. Um, I think internally, I think he's um, he's trying to hold on and he's going to do it the hard, hard way. But externally, I think he's right, ready to play. Um, we've heard from all reports the boys, uh, Brizzy boys were there um, in his corner, ready to back him no matter what. So, um, look, it's... It's going to be a good contest, um, and uh, for Thursday night, um, I expect nothing but fireworks. Well, I'll, I'll let you talk about the second team before we get into a bit more breaking down the lineup. Talk to me about that Rabido side and let everyone know, listen in, who's in what position and where they're going. Yeah, you got Latrell Milk in fullback, Alec Johnson, Isaiah Tass, Richard Kenner, Jacob Gagai to round out the back line, Cody Walker, Lachlan Elias, the halves, defeated to Toyota at uh, Lota, Damien Cook, Sean Kepi, um, Keon, Keon, and oh, I'm not going to even pronounce your name, mate. Um, they're in the front row. Uh, Dallas Tunkin, Cameron Murray to make out the inner, uh, the pack. Sorry, my headphone is all crackly at the moment. Um, <sighs> SH, DV Molly, uh, Shaq Mitchell, Thomas Burgess to make the interchange votes and out at the moment. MCK. To make up the 18th jersey bench with uh, Tannen Mill to be the um, the extra player to be warming up in that Thursday night. Um, as as you, as you <clears throat> if you can see underneath, you know a big loss is um, Jay Arrow who will be out for the next um, four to six weeks. Just uh, rehabbing that. Um, well, it depends. Stuff. Does it come out yet if you need surgery or not? Because surgery nah, is the season. They're, nah, they're going to try and um, 
they're going to try and postpone the ear surgery. Um, he's going to be playing uh, sore every week, like everybody does, but he's going to be the most sore as of them all. Um, if touch on wood, uh, touch wood, sorry. If they don't have to do the surgery, they're not going to do the surgery. But if it comes to too much and surgery is the only option, well, then that's his season done. So um, I say you see him from now until around seven at the latest. Um, him, him returning, um, they're going to use this time from now till then to make a decision whether he plays on. But I. I I'm, I'm leaning towards the uh, rehab side and no surgery at this early stage. So uh, for me, I think if you look at obviously South Sydney and what's happened over, especially last year, I can see him definitely going going and have surgery. They tried to do the same thing with um, the Sternum and Campbell Graham last year, and now it's cost him a whole season this year. So I think they will side on the side of caution. Jaya Arrow is an important player moving forward. Off the top of my head, without looking at it, I'm pretty sure he still has one or two seasons left with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So I can definitely see them signing on the caution of let's sit him out for a year. Let's get this right. Let's not do another Campbell Graham. And obviously he can play on. But I guess my biggest talking point to you, and it hasn't been a wide speculation across heaps of pages on Twitter, but there was the NRL Phantom, I believe it was a big report today that from his accounts that, Jacob Gagai was training with the juniors and it was actually Tane Milne that was training with the first grade. So take that with a grain of salt, but you could see a swap come kickoff. But let's talk about the big battle here. You've got the number ones, Reese Walsh, Latrell Mitchell, both from all accounts, they didn't get the win, but they both lit up Vegas. They both performed well for their team. I'd argue Latrell Mitchell was probably a top five or six in Vegas across all four teams. He was absolutely sensational, but... Talk to me about Reese Walsh. Talk to me about Latrell Mitchell. They both offer very different things when it comes to a fullback. I guess a personal opinion, what do you think works best? And I guess from a NRL perspective, if you had to pick a team tomorrow and you had to start around Reese Walsh and Latrell Mitchell, who are you building this water around? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to hit the nail on the head. Dry Arrow is contract till the end of 2027. So he's got this year plus three more before his um, contract is up. So that's uh, good news on his on his part. Um, but if I had to pick, um, or by a side, I'm picking Reese Walsh. I think he, young, uh, being the younger of the two, um, I think he can offer a um, lot more in long term. Um, but if we're talking a short term, one year deal, I need to win a comp. I'm picking um, Mitchell Mitchell. I think if he can stay fit, uh, um, Cool under the collar, um, sort of, sort of say. Um, I think he can do a job as well. So, uh, two impressive fullbacks, both uh, um, rep, uh, representative levels at their state, at various states. So, um, both add a different part to the t- uh, add a different part of the, their game to the team moving forward. Um, so, we'll just as I said, uh, I expect fireworks from this game on um, Thursday night, eight o'clock, 8 o'clock at Suncorp. And obviously, a big part of this game does go to, down to it is in Suncorp. They are in front of, arguably, it's going to be a sold-out crowd, their first game back in Suncorp for the year. I guess I'll throw it to you. We'll jump straight into the predictions. Who do you have winning this game? Is it Brisbane? Is it South Sydney? Can Souths obviously pull an upset because Brisbane are favourites going into this game? How do you see it playing out? Is it one to twelve or thirteen plus? Um, yeah. Look, you've caught me on a little bit of a. Uh, I'm trying to look at some stats here, just quickly as I look from to sort of um, back my bet here, uh, my predictions, should I say? Um, but nonetheless, uh, maybe you can go first while I bring up some. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to side with the home team. I think they've got enough foul power. And like you said, taking Jai Arrow out of this squad, I think it's definitely a loss. Um, they're already without Campbell Graham, which arguably to some people is the best defensive center in the comp. Don't entirely agree with that, but they are without him. So I'm going to go to Broncos. I'm going to go for him to bounce back in style. I'm going to go Broncos 13 plus. 
Yeah, okay, look, um, as I look at some quick stats here, I am going to side with the Brisbane Broncos, but given that I just quickly look at the uh, sports bet website, the line is uh, minus eight and a half for the Brisbane Broncos, so I'm going to go here one to 12, I think. Um, given that it's um, the line is eight and a half, I think it's going to be a nice tighter game, um, both coming off a loss, in Vegas, both teams don't want to be that 0-2 going into um, week three, um, given that, you know, I don't know really what their draw is like going South forward. South travel to Allianz against the Roosters. Oh, um, So they have an away game against the Roosters in round three, and the Brisbane Broncos will take on the Panthers at Bluebet Stadium in Penrith. Oh, again, another Thursday night football. So, yeah, especially both teams don't want to be coming off. Um, the, both teams don't want to be zero and two going into their respective games for round three. Um, South taking on Roosters and uh, Broncos taking on Pamra. So, um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm going to go Broncos one to twelve. I think it's just going to be a nice, uh, as I said, t- uh, tighter score line um, moving forward. Well, nonetheless, like you said, nonetheless, whether it's a Brisbane win, 13 plus, 1 to 12, South somehow pull an upset, they are heavy outsiders, but I do think it is going to be an entertaining game. And if you are free on Thursday and you, A, if you're American, you're tuning in, you haven't, you've only watched Vegas, tune into this game because it's going to be an absolute cracker. If you're a regular, tune in because I think there's going to be a lot of points in this game, especially how the Rabbitohs defended, obviously, in round one. I think the Broncos can explore that and can expand on that. But Baxter, 